Hi folks, this is International Master Kosti Kavutsky, and today I'll be doing a video on the tactical motif known as deflection. This can often be called attraction as well, and basically the deflection tactic is when you try and lure an enemy piece away from a certain role, either guarding a key square or guarding a specific piece. As I mentioned in the video on the decoy, uh, these two tactics are often confused for one another, but in fact are quite different. A decoy is when you're trying to lure a piece to a specific square so that you can perform some tactic with that piece sitting there, either a fork or, or a pin of some sort, whereas a deflection is more about whatever that piece is guarding, you're deflecting it away from uh, defending a key square. Hopefully in this video I'll be able to illustrate some key patterns when it comes to the deflection tactics and things to look for so that you're able to successfully find deflections in your own games. In general I think this is one of the easier tactics as well to understand because it, it's basically uh, pretty simple once you break it down. Okay here we have white to play and win and if you'd like to pause this video and try to solve the puzzle I'd encourage you to do so definitely good for your chess to solve puzzles on a daily basis but anyways we'll move on. Here White is having some pressure on the king side, the queen on h6, rook on g3 are very actively placed. But for the moment everything is protected, and if white takes on g8, black will simply take with the king and should be fine. Now white would like to take this pawn on f6, but obviously it is guarded by the queen here. And this means that the queen does have this role of defending the f6 pawn, which means that the queen is tied to the pawn and cannot move away. Using this feature, white wins with a very nice move, knight to c7. Attacking the rook on a8 and threatening to bring the knight to d5, where it will take on f6 and support white's queen to checkmate black's king. So since this queen is tied to the f6 pawn, this is the key deflection. Black is not able to take on c7, as this would lead to queen takes f6, followed by mate. So in the game, black played rook to b8, and now white traded rooks on g8, king takes g8, and after knight d5, it was time for black to resign, because the queen is under attack, and once the queen moves, white is going to take on f6 with the knight, and black will be forced to give up the queen in order to stave off mate. So this is a tactic that is a lot easier to find if you're in tune with what's going on to the position, and if you're making some key observations. The main one being that this queen has this very important role defending f6, which means that any other square that is not in contact with f6 isn't really being defended by the queen. Once you kind of realize that, then this knight c7 move becomes a candidate. Without this observation, a lot of us wouldn't even consider this move because our brain automatically discards moves where we hang our pieces. We recognize that the queen is controlling the square and we don't really take it one step further to realize that, oh, the queen actually can't leave uh, its post on e7. So that gives you a little bit of insight on how to successfully spot deflection tactics in your games. With that, let's move on to our next example. In this problem here, it is black to play and win. And again, if you'd like to solve the puzzle for yourself, I'd recommend to pause the video and take a crack at it. Here black has a dynamic position, especially this knight on d3 is very aggressively placed. Now with some basic pattern recognition, we note that black is actually very close to having a successful attack along this diagonal, leading to either some kind of discovered check or the classic smothered mate. For instance, queen to b6 here, or queen c5, looks very promising, since if the king goes to h1, black delivers this classic checkmate, starting with knight f2, knight h3, queen to g1, and knight f2 mate. The problem after queen b6 check is that white can block with bishop to e3 and successfully uh, defend against this attack. So noticing this, we come back to our original position and we find the winning move is bishop to b4. Now the point of this move is that we are attacking white's queen, which has no safe squares. White is forced to capture on b4 with the knight. And now that the knight has left c2, it no longer defends e3, which means after queen to c5 check, black is winning the game. Bishop e3 is now met with the simple queen takes e3, and black is able to win the game using the same very well-known smothered mate. 
So this is another classic uh, idea of deflection. Here it is all about this knight and deflecting the knight from uh, controlling the e3 square, which allows white to block the check on this diagonal. Now, how do you find this tactic in a game, you know, without any hints or any prompting? The way this works is, well, most players, they are first aware of the possibility of this check on the diagonal, this mother mate, but then they realize that it's not working and they look for a way to deflect one of these two pieces. Now, knight takes c1 would be nice to get rid of the bishop, but of course it also gets rid of our attacking piece, so that's not working. And then you look for other forcing moves. Eventually, bishop b4 should pop into mind. And if you're consciously aware of the different tactical ideas in the position, then you're kind of able to switch back and forth and you're able to remember that, oh, if the knight moves away from c2, I'm gonna have this queen b6 or queen c5 check available and win the game. So this is a very nice deflection leading to uh, a win by a smothered mate tactic. Here we have uh, another well-known example of deflection. I think this is a, a theme that quite commonly occurs in these kinds of positions. So this is white to play and win, and this will require some calculation. So I'd encourage you guys to pause the video and try to solve the puzzle for yourself. And here white wins with a direct attack against the king, starting with the move bishop to f6. Now this isn't the deflection just yet. White is threatening queen takes g7 with mate. g6 is impossible, of course, because the uh, pawn is pinned. And when black takes on f6, white plays e takes f6, threatening queen to g7 mate. The only defense is rook to g8. And here, if you did not see white's next move, then the whole solution does not work. It is only because of white's next move that he is winning, and that is rook to d8. Very, very nice motif along the back rank, and this is another uh, form of deflection. Black can trade on d8, white will recapture with the second rook, and now white is putting pressure on the 8th rank, which means queen to g7 is an unstoppable threat. Uh, if black takes the rook, the rook is deflected away from the g7 square. And if black does nothing, well, white is starting not only queen g7 mate, but also queen takes g8 mate. So black is basically uh, just lost here and getting mated. So the deflection here is this key move rook to d8, without which the whole solution would not work for white. And this is an important motive because if this move wasn't found beforehand, then white would not be able to make this move bishop f6 because it, it wouldn't appear to be working. So this is a move that you would have to have seen from afar. This is a common motive, especially with the pawn on f6, this kind of pin along the back rank slash deflection idea. Some of you may have seen it before, but I wanted to include it in case this was a, a new motive for, for any of the, the viewers here, because uh, it is quite a well-known idea and does show up in quite a few uh, different problems. With that, we'll wrap up the lesson here. Make sure to check out the exercises for more examples of deflection. Some of them may be quite challenging, so be sure to put your ultimate focus and, and effort into solving each one accurately. Until next time, this was International Master Kosti Kavutsky. Take care.